Why are people afraid of clowns? I don't know why people are afraid of clowns. You have to go back about 7,000 years. Grunk and Sulak were part of this, you know, northern European tribe, and they were part clowns, and they got in some sort of brawl. And then one of them, you know, was doing a show, and the other one got mad and threw something, and they got in a big fight, and the guy stabbed him just that moment of the confluence of the gods, lightning bolt. And these two have been fighting ever since. So uh, part of uh, our uh, schizophrenia as a culture is we don't remember this. But throughout time, the clown has been fighting with itself, and uh, if people are afraid of, of constant uh, battling. Coolerophobia. <laughs> You know, I guess people are, are scared of clowns for a, a couple of reasons. Maybe, you know, maybe it comes from the from the circus. The fear of clowns for me is the contradiction between the play, the play of the mask. But I think certainly in Occidental society, uh, there is a common misconception about clowns. But they're associated with something that is fearful. I think uh, in the United States, the word clown unfortunately, has negative connotations. You know, fear of clowns exists, so it, obviously it's real. I definitely find the uh, the American cultural view of clowns to be very amusing. Because clown has become a prostituted word, let's go back to uh, the element of a painted face. Clown is uh, where in which we think somebody like Ronald McDonald, and don't get me wrong, I played Ronald McDonald too. I've been Ronald McDonald on television and commercials. But I never sold hamburgers. I did public service announcements for children. There was this guy, and I think he was an Italian clown, where he, you know, the kind of common bozo clown that you see with like the uh, the no hair up here and the and the hair on the side and the the big kind of eyebrows and the big schnoz. Uh, this guy was trying to look like a like an ape, looked like a gorilla, and that was very different than the other clowns at the time. And he was like super popular clown. So then everybody started to try to look like him as well. In America, too often we see a clown, uh, we consider a clown to be a person in a costume, with makeup, with a nose, with this mask of paint, it's painted all over the face with all these adornments that, that disguise the person, and we have a sense that we're seeing something that's hidden or masked, or we see something that's false. There are clowns that are meant and intended to be scary and upset <laughs> and vulgar or weird or dark and I think if it's defended well it's everything's possible and it's fine. <laughs> totally fucking freak. <laughs> that was my job is to freak every fucking one of you out. <laughs> well I guess that worked for them. Let's not fucking work for you guys. <laughs> what are you fucking doing fucking thing? You guys fucking leave huh? <sighs> Clown is a very a spiritual word to me. But the word's been processed because it's very easy to say, you're a fucking clown, man. You're a, you're a fucking clown. That's a derogatory term. There were these things called clowns, <laughs> and they were in the circus. And then there was like a period of dark ages or something like that where, you know, real clowning was kind of forgotten. And what rose out of it were these crazy little uh, ways that clowns made their ways in, into uh, Americans' lives. And they are like figurines and horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> when this makeup does not come from the truth of the person wearing it, if it's just random, arbitrary, because it was on a packet from a Halloween store or something, then what we see is an individual hiding behind a costume, and that's very frightening. So the word clown itself means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Unfortunately, birthday party clowns, uh, clowns who do it for Sunday school teaching and stuff, and, and, and who, you know, the, the, they're not really performers. I don't think people are really afraid of clowns. When the clown mask is suggesting, with a smile for instance, happiness, 
yet the inner emotion is something different. That's what it, it it's confusing. It's contradictory. For some people, the clown lives in this dark place of the subconscious. It lives in the shadows, and that's exactly where it should live, in the intuition and the subconscious. And it calls forth those feelings, and that's something a lot of people aren't prepared to deal with. And so as a coping strategy, they develop fear mechanisms, and they dream with this, and it haunts them. And sometimes they develop a real psychological fear of clowns, and that then is associated to, to the term clown. They are these empty shells of, of what clowning is. It's, it's this image of what clowning is. It's this clown-esque idea rather than it being attached to anything. Let's say you have something which is original. Like the original person is like fantastic and they make this thing and they really make it work because of who they are and they have a sensitivity to the audience and they know who they are and this, this outfit or whatever is an, is an extension of them. And then you see somebody, somebody who's like, that's great. I'm gonna, that, the thing that's working about that is the costume. And they take that and it's a copy of that. And then somebody sees that thing and it's a copy of a copy. They think so eventually you have this copy of a copy of a copy that's performing and maybe it's, it seems quite garish, but the person doesn't know how to use it. I think what people are afraid of are people who are afraid, who then say that they're clowns. They think if they put on a... It's a costume, and a, you know, it's a mask. It's something you put on, and then uh, you do tricks. You blow up balloons, or maybe you do a couple of magic tricks or something. And unfortunately, that's what uh, what people think of when they think of that word. There's been people who call themselves clowns, who've raped children, eaten children, eaten people. It might be these things, you know, these sort of things running around and doing things at you that have no sensitivity, perhaps, to you personally. Because they lack certain performance smarts, that they can be insensitive to how they come across, and they are likely to scare people. We're all afraid of people who are afraid. But if somebody's afraid and they say, I'm a clown, that's pretty scary. A man playing, I'm super happy, but... I'm really, really depressed and really, I don't want to make people laugh yet to have this huge smile saying, I want to be here. That's when I think it's <laughs> just strange. Just by the fact that you put on a wig and a nose, uh, and those are very, those are very um, cliche elements of what clown is. Me, I don't wear a red nose. I have one character of the 278 characters I have that wears a red nose, one. If they see somebody good, they... They love it. Listen, I got a really good idea. Why don't we go check out the Empire State Building? What do you think? Yeah! Ba -da 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 -da. You know, it works in performance. It's just that the uh, the popular image of it hasn't caught up so much. When you work from the heart, and and, and the material you do has a kind of purpose, uh, kind of gestalt that has a purpose driving it, and that drive is connected with the audience, or connected with the experience of, of, of the the person who's seeing the clown. There's never ever a fear. The the person who has the fear of clowns before that experience loses an intellectual participation and become, and before they know it, they're involved in a spiritual or intuitive way with that clown. And afterwards, they always have a realization, I'm not afraid of clowns.
Maybe it's your time to go out, see the sights, investigate some mysteries of your own, huh? Don't hang around on these streets, though. These dark, filthy, factory waiting streets. Cause you know who this turf belongs to? <laughs> it belongs to me.